Are you guys ready? We are about to embark on a journey cleaning my greenhouse cabinet. I do this maybe once a month. Honestly, it never really gets that dirty. I don't have plants really ever just sitting in dirt. Most of them have been transplanted to the new mix, which keeps everything really like clean and tidy. I don't have little flecks of dirt all over the place. Although I do have some plants that are still in their original um, nursery pot and so they have some soil in them. I haven't gotten around to repotting them yet. I did place an order with a local plant nursery called Pistols and I'm gonna go pick up that order sometime this week. Um, I ordered, I think, like three or four pots. I'm really, really excited to go get that order. I'm just really excited in general for the warmer months. It is gray and rainy and tragic outside today. Um, not that this is anything out of the norm for this time of year, but I'm just desperately dreaming of summer. I'm just really ready to be outside every day, all day. <laughs> I don't want to be inside hibernating anymore. So I don't know if you can relate. You probably can. Although um, spring is only 20 days away. Today is the last day of February, the 28th. It's a Monday and it's been one week officially since I had that mindset shift where I decided to start making YouTube content again. The goal for today is to take every single plant out of this greenhouse cabinet and bring it over to my sink in the kitchen and drench the mix that it's sitting in, which is the new mix, if I haven't mentioned a million times already. Um, the point is to get this mix completely drenched and it's kind of hard to do that if I just take a little watering can and just go around. Um, so I really want to give everything a really good rinse today. I want to rinse off leaves. So if you want to take a closer look at the collection that I have in the greenhouse cabinet, uh, stay tuned. Cool. Today's entertainment on YouTube begins with tea, self-love, confidence, acceptance, habits, and creativity from a super incredible creator named Heinz, H-I-N-D-Z, like hindsight. Okay, so to start, we remove all the plants from the cabinet. I swear I love you myself every single time. If you have a limiting belief that, you know, you can be a YouTuber, what do you have to do? You have to get in motion. You already know that you have to get into action, but you have to stop internalizing that limiting belief. Stop saying it's true. Instead, prove it wrong. Look at it like that bully, that teacher, or that person you want to prove wrong that just told you you wouldn't amount to anything. Create a fake super villain, you understand? And become a superhero in your own story. Driving force was they wanted to prove somebody wrong. I'm not saying it's the main driving force, but it's a little bit of fuel. So me, again, I don't like to internalize my limiting beliefs. I like to look at them and say, hmm, maybe this is an opportunity to challenge me, you understand? Build that confidence, cultivate that energy within yourself, and then we get fired to whatever we are trying to do. But your limiting beliefs can either be opportunities to overcome, or a limiting belief may be an opportunity to steer you in another direction. The only problem is, we want things to be so clear. We want clarity. That's just not how life works, you understand? This journey starts when you set the intention. As soon as you set the intention that I want to grow, and I ain't gonna make up the both of them have the exact same intention. Maybe they're just express that's how they want to express themselves for the day, right? Just let people be who they want to be. We don't know their intention. I'm struggling with trusting my creative abilities. I kind of stand it right now. This month's training for this time for lifetimes. There is something that we need to be going through, transforming and up-leveling for ourselves. 
All right, well, everything is now cleaned to the best of my ability. I'm not gonna worry too much about smudges, etc. I'm just gonna move forward in the direction of getting all of these plants watered. I'm gonna be bringing them over to the sink in the kitchen one by one and really inspecting the leaves, rinsing everything, getting a really good um, bath for some of these beautiful plants. Some of them do not need watering. I'm noticing that some of them have retained a lot of moisture from the last time I watered, which was like, I don't know, maybe two weeks ago. We are starting off today with watering my white wizards that I am growing from tissue culture. I've just noticed that these three have really taken off and they've been able to really grow on their own. Really though, look at that. Beautiful variegation. We've got some unhappy leaves in there. I'll just pluck those off. Yeah, these two in the back don't really seem to have much variegation. We've got a little bit there, um, but they're still really fun to watch grow. But man, this is cool. I'm really, really happy that at least one has held on to that really strong variegation. <laughs> Tissue culture is a process involving very sanitary practices, um, slicing the tiniest little bit of a uh, very strong mother plant and then placing that little slice of plant stem in some sort of hormone gel thing that allows the that little tiny slice of plant to produce a full other plant from this. So this is how most mass production of plants is done. Um, it's just that it's kind of something that's just becoming aware to us. So um, I'm sure that there are multiple opinions on that, but I was really excited to give it a try to import some tiny, tiny little plants in that, in that rooting gel is really, really cool. Um, and just to let you know, it's taken this long for these plants to create even the smallest root system. When they come to you in the gel, there is no root system. It's just kind of magically a plant in gel. I'm sure someone out there could explain this better than me, but they, they come so tiny. These plants I've been growing since last summer, and this is where I'm at right now. That makes me really happy. Um, they are in the rescue mix from Newt. I think a common misconception about watering is that it happens during the time when you're watering your plants. I don't believe that to be true. My experience has taught me that overwatering happens from the frequency of watering rather than the amount you give it in that moment. Now, there's some exceptions to this rule as if it's in a plastic nursery pot and it's sitting in a, a beautiful like ceramic pot, like a decorative pot. Um, if you overwater and the water drains into the bottom of that pot and it just sits there, obviously major root rot scenario coming at you there. But did you see how much water I gave this plant? It was pouring out of the bottom of the plant. Now this is the way, the healthiest way to water your plants. You want them to have a full stream of water pouring through the bottom of the pot. This is why it's so important to have drainage holes because you really want the soil medium to get soaked so that the roots can find the moisture, but you don't want it to be sitting in water and you don't want to do this process more than once a week or even once every other week or once every two and a half weeks in the winter time you really don't need to water very much so drenching the substrate allowing that water to pour through the bottom and then not doing that again until the soil substrate has completely dried or at least close to completely drying, depending on the plant. 
We're working on rehabbing and I am figuring it out slowly. It's just gonna take me some time to understand this language. Check out your plants for pests. Now pests are a really big deal. They go hand in hand with, with plants. It's just one of those things that you will in, encounter when you're a plant person. Unfortunately, it's just part of the part of the deal. So um, this allows you to really, this watering method really allows you to go through and check the backs of the leaves. Now this is where most pests will hang out. There's a few things that I will use when treating my plants for pests and I'm sure that eventually we will get to a video about that. Praying for green. Allow it to be green, please. <laughs> I just want a giant chunk of green or almost an entirely green leaf to really sustain this plant. So pray for me. You know, you don't always need the fanciest plant tools. A little chopstick is absolutely okay to use. This way we just have a little bit more of an upright position and I don't have to rely on leaning it up against other plants in the greenhouse. So we've got, I wish, I so wish I could give you a better shot of that auxiliary node right there. I wanted to give you a closer look at this new growth because even if it doesn't hang around for very long, it sure is pretty. Mm -hmm.